Armando Hasudugan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasudugan. In this video, we're going to talk about atherosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. Actually, it's in the narrowing of the arteries due to plaque formation. A plaque in this case is basically a waxy substance made of predominantly lipids. And atherosclerosis is different to arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis is just hardening of the arteries. Now, atherosclerosis is a common cause of heart attacks. So if here I'm drawing the heart, we have blood vessels called these coronary arteries that supply the heart with oxygen. So let's take a look at two different scenarios. Here are vessels and here are cardiac muscle cells. Normally, the vessels, the blood vessels, are carrying blood full of oxygen to the cardiac muscle cells, thus allowing the cardiac muscle cells to function normally which means the heart will function normally. However, if we, look at an uh, uh, if we look at an atherosclerosis scenario, there is a plaque formation. Blood can't be delivered properly to the heart or there is reduced like, blood flow to the heart. And as a consequence, the cardiac muscle cells are deprived of oxygen. Symptoms of atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries uh, include vomiting, anxiety, angina, which is pain in the, heart, in the chest area, coughing, and feeling faint. So again, if the atherosclerosis in the coronary artery here is so severe, it can actually block everything. It can block the blood supply altogether, and we get ischemia of the cardiac muscle cells. And so, as a consequence, the, the, these cells will die, and you get a heart attack or heart failure. So, atherosclerosis formation of the coronary arteries can lead to myocardial ischemia, but there can also be atherosclerosis formation in the carotid arteries. This can cause symptoms such as weakness, dysphia, headache, facial numbness, and paralysis. And this is because the carotid arteries is the blood supply to your brain, so if you don't get any blood to your brain, you get stroke as well as these symptoms. Um, atherosclerotic plaque can cause peripheral vascular disease. Now, peripheral vascular disease is the reduced circulation of blood to a body part other than the brain or heart. So, you know, for example, the liver or, or, or uh, something else like your re reproductive organs. And this is bad in every respect. Uh, in peripheral vascular disease, you can have uh, hair loss, erectile dysfunction, and weakening of the associated area. Another important site where atherosclerosis can occur is the renal arteries. This can cause a reduction in appetite, swelling of the hands, and, um, and most importantly, it can trigger a renin release, which will significantly increase the blood pressure. Okay, so there were some common sites where atherosclerotic plaques can occur, but let's see how severe an atherosclerotic plaque can become. So here is the increase in severity. The first blood vessel here is normal with normal blood flow, as we can see. A plaque can form within the layer of the blood vessel. Firstly, it will be growing downwards, so pushing uh, sort of the vessel down. When more plaque forms, the plaque become, begins growing upwards, so it will actually narrow the blood vessel. If the plaque keeps growing, severity increases and the blood vessel really begins to narrow. The massive plaque at the end can actually then rupture, forming a thrombus, forming a clot, which will stop or impede blood flow. When an atherosclerotic plaque ruptures, it is serious. Now that we get the overall picture, let's look at the mechanism of plaque formation in a bit more detail. So let us zoom first into this blood vessel and look at its different layers and what they contain. So here is our endothelial cells and here is the lumen where we have red blood cells and also lipoproteins such as LDLs which are low density lipoproteins. Surrounding the endothelium, we have the tunica intima and then the tunica media. 
in the tunica media, we have smooth muscle cells that are important in contraction of vessels. Surrounding the media, we have the adventitia, which is essentially connective tissue. There are a few theories of how atherosclerosis begins. One theory begin, uh, suggests that there is endothelial dysfunction and when there is high amounts of circulating LDLs. Because there are high concentrations or high circulating low density lipoproteins, low L uh, LDLs, these LDLs can deposit in the tunica intima and then become oxidized. Oxidized LDL activates endothelial cells, causing the endothelial cells to express receptors uh, for white blood cells on their surface. So to summarize here, I wrote, increase in LDLs deposits in tunica intima and becomes oxidized, which will activate endothelial cells. So here I'm drawing the same layers of the blood vessel and we can see there is accumulation of oxi um, ox uh, oxidized LDLs, which will activate endothelial cells, which will begin expressing adhesion molecules for white blood cells. Adhesion of white blood cells, adhesion of blood leukocytes to activated endothelial uh, cells will allow um, monocytes and T helper cells to move into the tunica intima layer of the blood vessel. When monocytes move into the tunica intima, they will become macrophages. And macrophages will then take up these oxidized LDLs and then become foam cells. The foam cells are key in atherosclerosis. Foam cells do many things, one of which is it promotes migration of smooth muscle cells, SMC, from the tunica media into the tunica intima, and also promotes smooth muscle cell proliferation. An increase in smooth muscle cell proliferation heightens or increases synthesis of collagen which can lead to hardening of the atherosclerotic plaque. During this whole process, foam cells will also die, releasing its lipid content. This drives the growth of the plaque. As the plaque grows, it builds in pressure, which can cause rupturing of the plaque itself, which is where things can become serious. So here again, we have the tunica intima and tunica media of the blood vessel. Here are the smooth muscle cells which have accumulated in the tunica intima layer, um, as well as collagen. Foam cells are here and they die together with other cells in the area. So here we have dead foam cells with lipid contents spilt out. The growth of the plaque is this area here. Now the plaque can then rupture, which can lead to thrombosis. Thrombosis is when the plaque ruptures and where coagulation happens to stop, uh, to stop the plaque from spilling its content into the lumen. This forms a thrombus, a clot, which can impede blood flow and cause serious complications. So, okay, that was re uh, that was that was a bit of detail of how atherosclerotic plaque forms and how it ruptures. But let us go a step further and look at it in a bit more detail and, and a, I guess a, a better diagram maybe. So here is, we have the endothelial cell, the tunica intima layer, and then we have the tunica media layer containing smooth muscle cells. And here is our lumen, the inside of the blood vessel, we can, where we can find red blood cells, and we can find circulating low-density lipoproteins. Um, this black dot here of the LDL is called a, is, is, is the protein part. Anyway, let's just say we have dysfunction, a dysfunctional endothelial cells, dysfunctional endothelial cells here. This allows the, uh, you know, a lot of LDLs 
to basically move into the tunica intermalayer. When it moves into tunica intermalayer, the dysfunctional endothelial cells release reactive oxygen species and other enzymes such as metalloproteases, which will oxidize the LDL. So when the LDL is oxidized, it cannot actually leave the tunica intima. It's trapped. Okay, the dysfunctional endothelium and the ox subsequently oxidized LDL uh, triggers the endothelial cells to, remember, express uh, adhesion molecules for white blood cells. So here we have a monocyte circling around. It attaches to these receptors, and then it will move in. When it moves into the tunica intima, when monocytes move into tissues, they become macrophages. So here we have a macrophage, three. The macrophage has a receptor, a scavenger receptor, that will basically eat up, or that will take in this ox uh, oxidized LDL. The macrophage engulfs this oxidized LDL, and then it will become a foam cell. Now foam cells, they're basically macrophages containing lipids and they have many, many functions. One of which is that it will release chemokines to attract more macrophages. Foam cells can also do, step four here I'm drawing, it can release uh, IGF-1, which is basically a growth factor. And this growth factor will cause smooth muscle cells to migrate and cause smooth muscle cell proliferation in the tunica intima. So here we have the smooth muscle cells in the tunica media layer and they will migrate into the tunica intima layer and they will proliferate. And here, because we have a lot of uh, smooth muscle cells, step five, they make more collagen. Fo foam cells in step six can also die and they will die, releasing their lipid contents, including DNA materials this DNA material will actually attract neutrophils because it's sort of very, it's it's actually inflammatory in this respect. Foam cells can also release pro-inflammatory cytokines and reactive oxygen species, and um, and this together with neutrophils will increase inflammation in the area, and this area is actually now the plaque because it's got foam cells, it's got dead dead foam cells, it's got collagen, it's got smooth muscle cells, it's got all this stuff, and this makes up the plaque. Another interesting thing that occurs is uh, we, there is an increase in blood supply to the layer of the tunica intima, to the vessel. So it's, if you didn't know, vessel, blood vessels have its own vessel supply. And this vessel, these vessels are known as ve uh, vase of Zorum. Anyways, these T, c t cells also have a role uh, in atherosclerosis. So these T cells, they can bind onto adhesion receptors which are expressed on endothelial cells. They then enter the area, they enter the plaque area. They can be activated by macrophages and they can begin releasing other substances such as interferon gamma. Interferon gamma essentially promotes inflammation and it activates endothelial cells to attract more white blood cells and everything else. So this plaque essentially will just keep growing. It will cause, in, it causes foam cells to die. It's, it's, there's increase in lipid content. There's inflammation. And then all this, as it grows, it can rupture. And this is when thrombosis occurs, rupturing. And when it ruptures, a thrombus can form, a clot can form, and a clot forms when there's heaps of platelets, heaps of clotting factors that all aggregate to the area, and all this can impede blood flow. Uh, so that was a video on atherosclerosis. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.